So the first thing we're going to want to do is remove um, the screws from the foot pad and remove your fender if you have one. Um, I've already removed the fender from here, but for you, you would just normally take the eighth inch um, hex and remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. Then we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing for the uh, float plates or for your, if you have the bumpers here. So we're going to go ahead and remove these screws here. If you've got screws that have a lot of um, gunk in them just from dirt or sand, you can take some tweezers and clean them out so that way you don't strip the bolt head out. Now that we've got all of these removed, we're going to turn it over and do the same thing to this side. Now this is your front foot pad, so you're actually going to have a sensor here, so make sure to not damage the wire coming from the foot pad. There's a wire that passes through the axle. Um, you want to remove the two Phillips head screws that are holding that plate there. Just be very careful not to cut or damage the bundle of wires there. So you can flip the board back over and now we're going to remove the foot pad so we don't damage it while we're working. So to do that you're going to want to turn that front collar and then pull it out. So you're, this collar you're going to want to turn it counterclockwise and pull the uh, connector out. And then this can go off to the side as well. Now we're going to take the eighth inch allen and remove one and two screws. Now notice that bumper is going to come right off. Now this entire housing is loose. So we're going to remove these two and they are the same thing. They're very small screws and that'll remove our front bumper and then this wire protecting cover can be removed. You're going to pull this white tab out and then this connector will come right out. Remove these two Phillips screws that feed the housing wire bundle. They protect it from the wheel. So once you've removed those covers, you wanna be very careful with this bundle not to kink it in any way because this is where a lot of those error 16 or error 23 problems come from there are two screws here covered by the warranty void if removed stickers and then the housing should slide right out that's where a lot of the errors come from from the wire getting cut on the axle um, we're going to want to remove these five Phillips screws and then all of the hex screws here around the uh, perimeter using the 332nd uh, Allen key. All right, so once all the screws are removed, we want to make sure we get no dirt or dust inside the housing. So you want to knock all the loose stuff off ahead of time. We can peel that away. And um, yeah, you can see we have some debris in there. So we'll have to clean that off before we reinstall it. All right, now this is extremely important. We want to make sure that we unplug this balance connector, which is a 24 pin connector first. So we're going to press on this clip right up here and pull it back and then we're going to remove the XT60 connector, which is this connector going directly to the battery. And, but we do that by just pulling it straight back out. Now we can remove the stock battery. The next step is to measure 50 millimeters from the edge of the panel between the BMS and the battery and cut down about 15, cent, uh, 15 millimeters. So we're gonna put an initial cut there so then we want to mark 15 centimeters, uh, 15 millimeters from the top. 
So about this much. And we're gonna cut that away. I would recommend moving the BMS out of the, out of the way for this, just so we make sure not to damage it. Now, if you have these extrusions here in your housing, some people do and some don't, you're gonna wanna really make sure to cut these away because they could interfere with the battery fitment. So we wanna cut those extrusions away. And then another thing that people found helpful was if we trimmed this down about a millimeter and this down about a millimeter. So you can do that with the utility knife. You can shave it down a bit. Okay, so the next step is to have all of the wires lined up right here under the battery and that's the power and all the signal wires and it makes it really easy if you can tape them down so that way they don't get in the way when you're trying to do the install um what you're going to want to do is take these two supplied pieces of fish paper and put them right here on the bms the first piece that just makes sure that that cell has no chance of shorting with any uh, with any components on the bms and what i like to do is insert the wire side in first, this side first, and then we'll push it right down in place and it goes in really easily. Make sure you, you're not pushing on top of that data connector or these power wires. Make sure these are not in your way. And then what we can do next is plug the power in, making sure to have the black line up with the black and the red with the red right across. And then we can plug this connector in here. Now we also include a second piece of fish paper and you can place that right on top of your balance leads. And that's just gonna make sure that that aluminum lid doesn't short with any of your balance leads there. Okay, so once uh, you've secured the battery in and you make sure that it's all sealed up, uh, a good step to do is to actually plug it in uh, and just kind of make sure that everything is uh, working and the harness isn't damaged and the battery's plugged in correctly before we reassemble, just in case you have to take it all back apart. So to do that, we're just gonna plug in this connector and you normally don't even have to go all the way. And then you can power the board on and your light should turn on and it should remain on just as normal. And then you can connect to it with the one wheel app and maybe try changing a mode. Yeah, there we go. So we're activated, we're at a full uh, 98%. And if that, no errors come up, then we are perfectly good. And I see no errors, so we're good to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and power the board off, unplug this connector, and we'll show you how to reassemble the board. We're gonna line up the housing with the rails and pushing it in slowly. You can also do this by keeping the board vertical and pulling down. But when you do this, you might go very quickly. You could potentially pinch your fingers or damage the harness. So keep checking. Okay. And you wanna go until your holes here are all lined up with your rail holes. Now the next step is to be very gentle and feed that harness back in place, like so. Take the harness cover with the Phillips screws and the Phillips screwdriver. You can take your main connector and plug it in and re-secure the tab if yours is not damaged. And then we can take the rest of the harness covers. And the way to install this, it's shaped like an L and you want where the chamfer is to be at the base of the L. So once you position it and you can see where the insert is, 
you can take your screw and hand tighten these and they'll straighten out once you get some torque on there. Don't over tighten these because you will strip. Now we're gonna grab our warranty void screws and put those back in place so our housing is now secured to the rails. We can take our wire cover and put that back in place. And we want this tab to fold into there so that way that doesn't fall out. What you can take is your front bumper and you can insert it. Uh, there are two panels right here that get inserted into the rails. So we have to make sure those are lined up on both sides. And then we can flip our board over and you can take one of the short screws that we've removed earlier and they go into these two screw holes. Again, you don't want to use too much torque on these. And now we can take our foot pad and there's a notch, which is like the keyway. That's gonna face up and then it will plug right in. You wanna make sure you get in completely because if you have foot pad, sensor issues you might fall off you want to twist that front collar so it is completely secure now once we have that plug in we can flip the board upside down and you can take these two screws which we removed earlier and secure them through to the foot pad Now, while we're working on this side, we can take our, uh, if you have the screws for the um, skid plate, uh, you can insert those now. This person has a extra layer of protection, which is always nice. Now we're gonna move to the battery housing side. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the front. We wanna make sure that those two inserts Clip into the rail. There we go. Then we can take our bash plate here. Now we can flip the board over. We actually have our two little screws here that need to go in. Right there. We can place our foot pad, flip the board over, and secure these two. And at this point, you are done. We're back to stop. So just make sure you leave the board to charge until the charger light is completely finished. And if you need a, a point of reference for the range, we actually have a range chart available. Um, on, on the sales page uh, description and the images. So uh, you would actually use the voltage and compare um, that voltage to the chart and you'll get a, a percent to tell you how much um, range you actually have.